Hey y'all, it's Brady. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's video is a collaboration with Moss Family TV. And today we're going to show you some freezer prep ideas that can get you a meal or a snack on the table in a hurry. Um, so if you are new to my channel, hi there, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope that you'll subscribe. I hope that you find something that you enjoy and I can't wait to have you join our family. If you are from my channel watching this, please go to the description box below. Click on Fallon's video from Moss Family TV and check out what she has to offer. I know that you're going to love it. I know you're going to love her sweet family. They are awesome. She does lots of grocery hauls and daily life vlogs and they have a wonderful sweet family with lots of cooking videos and other things like that to share as well. So, again, if you're new, I would love to have you subscribe. Let's get started. I'm going to show you three easy recipes. And uh, let me, you know what, let me just preface this with some uh, honesty here for a minute. So, um, today I had everything filmed early in the, earlier in the week to show you some kid food ideas and to get everything there. And I had the video edited and ready to go and was trying to upload and somehow deleted every bit of footage. Can't recover it. So we're gonna recover right now on the fly. Get y'all some recipes in your freezer that is gonna help you out and I hope it blesses you. So the three things I'm gonna show you today are a baked ziti freezer meal. Super simple, super easy, super delicious. I'm also going to show you a French toast casserole that is great to throw together, throw in the freezer, and then you can just bake it whenever you need to take it with you somewhere um, to an event or to a gathering or just on an easy Saturday breakfast, whatever's gonna work best for you. And then also, I'm gonna show you some sausage, egg, and cheese breakfast burritos that I know my family's gonna love. So, let's get started. All right, guys, let's get started with that first meal. So the baked ziti, you're going to need a pan, which I've got heating up. I'm also going to get a pot boiling of water. You're gonna need a tablespoon of minced garlic, a jar of pasta sauce. This is just one that we do like, but I got it pretty much free couponing. A pound of penne rigatti, some Parmesan and Romano cheese to top it with. 80-20 ground beef, which I'm going to drain, so you could also use 93-7 or 90-10, whatever you've got on hand, and then some mozzarella cheese. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump this, the minced garlic, some salt, some pepper, and um, a little bit of onion powder. Get those cooking together, then I'll drain the meat. I'll show you what that looks like, and then we'll throw the rest of it together. I'm also going to get the water boiling for the pasta. All right, so I've got the ground beef cooking, the water is boiling, and now we're going to start on our breakfast burritos. This is just some turkey breakfast sausage that I am cooking up. I've also got 10 eggs, some mild cheddar cheese, and you will also need 10 uh, soft taco sized flour tortillas. Um, the corn ones just don't really work well for this, but if you prefer corn, you can certainly try it. You're just not going to want to put as much filling in each one. So, I'm going to cook this up, and then we'll add in our eggs, add in our cheese when the eggs are cooked, and fill our burrito. Alright, so everything is coming along. We've got this chopped up and cooking. We've got the ground beef almost done. I'm going to add in the noodles. I don't know if I'm going to use any of this box Alright, so, never mind the air fryer that I still haven't put up. Get this stirring and check on it. Yeah, it still has a little bit left to go. And I'm going to get a plate out with a paper towel line to drain that. And let's stir our pasta. There we go. And I did salt my water first to try to help the pasta not stick together, which is an easy trick if you've never done that before. Go. Ooh, sorry about the steam there. Let's check on this ground turkey. Our 
back. And I'm going to turn this pasta down a little bit because it is going to, excuse me, it is going to start bubbling away. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna grab that paper towel and that plate so that we're ready to go. And then I'll get us set up to show you the French toast casserole. And then. All right, and here is that ground beef. I've got it draining on a paper towel, got our ingredients ready. I did wanna show you that I have two pans, two eight by eight disposable baking pans sprayed with cooking spray ready for this when this cools and our pasta's ready. And then I went on ahead and sprayed another one for this French toast casserole. I've got my bowl out. We've got one can of evaporated milk. I'm also going to grab, let me just show you here. I have got some honey wheat and some whole wheat bread that we are gonna tear up and use in our French toast casserole. Use what you have on hand. That is super important to maximize your budget, maximize, um, you're, you know, preventing food waste and uh, get some things cleared up. So that's what I'm going to use there. Um, I'm going to tear that bread into strips, throw it in this bowl, and then I'll show you the evaporated milk, the eggs, the brown sugar, and the cinnamon that you're going to need. We'll mix it all up, dump it in that pan, and get ready to go. So let me get this bread tear torn up, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so the turkey sausage is complete. It is completely cooked through and brown. So what I'm going to do is I've got 10 eggs. I'm going to crack those in here, let them cook and scramble up, and then we'll add in our cheese, and then we'll start rolling them up. All right. All right. So we go. So we have got 10 eggs in there. So I'm just stick to the side. And it looks up. There we go, and let those eggs scramble through. Over here, our pasta is done. So I'm gonna let that set for just a minute. And we're gonna go over here. I'm gonna show you that I have got about 10 pieces of bread and the heels, uh, just the two little heels of the loaf of bread in there. And then to that, I'm going to add a can. This is a 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. You could use regular milk. That would be totally fine. I am also going to, this is not an exact measurement here guys, but I'm also going to add in two teaspoons of cinnamon. Do, 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 do. There we go. And four that's two teaspoons of cinnamon and four tablespoons, if I can ever get it to come out of there. We've got our meat draining over there for the baked Z. I'm gonna do four tablespoons here of brown sugar. I think we're gonna actually do five. We're gonna do five tablespoons of brown sugar. Okay, now, the other thing that I'm gonna do is add two eggs I'm just going to crack those in there, and then I'll mix that up and show you as I pour it into the pan, and then we're done. Guys, that's it. So simple. And then you throw it in the, in the fridge. Okay, so as I'm appetizing, ooh, my bowl is slipping everywhere. And this looks at this moment. It's going to be delicious. So I have just mixed everything together. I'm going to keep mixing for a minute. You want to make sure that that brown sugar and cinnamon are evenly dispersed because I love cinnamon as much as the next gal but you're not going to want to bite into that <laughs> an entire teaspoon of it in one bite and then have the rest of it be bland. So let's get this pan here. Let's try my best to one-handed not make a giant mess. Woohoo! Maybe there's more. Okay, let me get this into the bowl and I'll show you what it looks like all around. All right, and here is our pan. I just I just dumped everything into the bowl or into the pan out of the bowl and used my spoon to spread it out. And then I wrote French toast casserole on here. We're gonna write fall, bake at 350 degrees for say 35 to 40 minutes depending 
depending on if still frozen. And my family's used to my chicken scratch handwriting here, so they'll know what I meant. So that's what you gotta do, guys. That's it. Super simple, easy breakfast. Scramble some eggs or throw some fruit with it and you are done. So I'm gonna clean this stuff up out of the way. Then we're gonna do our baked ziti and then we'll move on to our breakfast. So now, now you can see that I have poured those noodles as they were cooked. I just drained them off. Left a tiny bit of water on them just because they didn't want them to stick together as they sat there waiting for me to be ready. Dump them into these two pans as evenly as possible. We've got our ground beef, I've got our sauce right here, and I've got our cheese. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this same pan over here, mix up the sauce, the meat, and the shredded mozzarella, about a half a cup, um, and then we will mix it into the pasta. Bowl. Okay, so I have added in the ground beef into this pot that we drained the pasta from. I've added in the jar of sauce and about a half a cup of cheese. And sorry for the lighting, guys. It's getting dark here. Like I said, this was kind of a wrench in my plans. I had other things planned to share with you, and I... Still, I'm not 100% sure what happened to my footage. So, uh, we're going with this. This is something else I had already planned to share with you in another video. Uh, just hopefully after my new tripod got here. So, we're just going to roll with it. And guys, you know, let's stop for a moment here. Let's just talk about that. Let me flip, let me okay. flip this. Let's talk about this for a second. If you've got life going on, give yourself some grace. Life happens. Things happen. Your kids get sick. We've had sickness. We've had the stomach virus going on. Um, not now. Obviously, I wouldn't be making the video if if I was sick. Um, but we've had a lot going on and life happens. And then in a hurry, somehow I deleted my footage or whatever and I wanted to cry and I wanted to be like, ah, what do I do? But you know what? That's what you do. You take a minute, you get it out of your system and then you come back and you go, okay, nope, we're not doing this. We're going to get it together. We're going to regroup figure out what we can do and move on because there was no sense in me getting upset about it and letting it ruin my whole day. Um, is this the perfect video that I wanted to share? Absolutely not, but this is okay, gonna so work. Here's our sauce mixture. I'm just going to add it to our pasta. Scoot this over so that I don't make such a mess. And sorry for the little chatty moment there, but I just wanted to share that with you guys because I'm sure somebody Somebody needs that encouragement that, you know, I'm a perfectionist. I would prefer that things be exactly how I had planned them. Um, but that's not reality. That's not life. That's not how everything's going to go all the time. And the best thing that we can do for ourselves is just to roll with that. Um, you know, there's no sense in letting something, as much as YouTube means to me and as excited as I am, getting started in this and sharing with y'all it's still not more important than you know my family and my kiddos and me having a good day and a good attitude about life so i encourage you to make sure that, that you're giving yourself grace if things happen or things don't go the way that you had planned or give others grace if they you know if it, if it was out of your control so um Let's get this mixed up. So I've just divided that meat mixture, meat and sauce and cheese mixture, up as evenly as I can over this pasta. And I'm just going to mix this up. And my pasta still is sticking together a little bit. If you like yours with more sauce, you can absolutely do two jars of sauce. Um, we're just not huge on sauce, so I prefer to do it this way. And the other thing that I would encourage you is that if you're like, well, I'm not sure which way we would prefer it, um, then you can totally do it this way and add more sauce when you thaw it. And, um, and that way you won't, ooh, made a mess. Um, that way you will not have too much sauce and hate it or you know, vice versa, it'd be too dry and you just feel stuck with it. You can always add to it. And um, one thing that I wanted to share is these noodles are not totally cooked through. You wanna make sure they're still al dente, or they still have a little bit of a bite to them because you don't want to 
I got just threw a noodle on the floor. Real life, guys. Real life. The dog will be happy to take care of that. Um, <laughs> what was I saying now? Oh, my goodness. Oh, you don't want them to be too well done like you were just going to sit down and eat them because they're going to absorb some of this pasta sauce while they cook. And then you're going to be stuck with mushy noodles. And I don't know anybody that enjoys a mushy noodle. So... And this is kind of the, honestly, the longest part in my opinion, because I feel like I'm isolated to one pan doing this and just stirring. But, and I am losing half my noodles. Okay. Alrighty. So, we're getting there. Oh my goodness. Alright, I'm going to clean up my mess, finish mixing this up one, and then... I will cover these in foil. I'm doing two layers of foil on these, two layers of foil on the French toast casserole as well. And then I'll write the directions on there. Um, once I do this, I am going to sprinkle some of the shaky cheese, the grated Parmesan, over the top. And you can always add more cheese once you cook it, like once you, unf once you have it in the oven. But I would encourage you not to add a ton of the shredded cheese because what's going to happen is... You're going to bake it at first with the foil still on, and when you do that, if your cheese is touching the foil, then when you pull the foil off, um, all your cheese is going to come off with it. So that's why I mix some in, and then I'll add more cheese to it when I bake it without the cover. So, let me get that, let me get these covered up, and we'll show you what it looks right, like. so here is the baked ziti, all sealed up with two layers of foil. I'm going to just right on here. Baked. Ziti, and you're probably also going to want to add the date up here. So, 2 11 19. Just so I know when I made it, if it sits in there for a while, which it probably won't thaw. And I just say thaw because some people prefer in the fridge, some people prefer uh, like in the fridge for 24 hours, some people prefer it on the counter for an hour because that's all the time they have, and some people just prefer to throw it in the oven. So, you can do that any of those ways and then bake. Covered at 350 for 45 minutes and cover top with cheese and bake 15 to 20 minutes for until properly. There you go. Super simple. So that's all done. Now let's move on to our last thing, our breakfast burritos. Okay, here we go. Last thing. So I've got my 10 flour tortillas. I've got a freezer bag. You definitely want to use freezer bags um, with it labeled with the date, sausage, egg, and cheese burritos. So that the rest of the family knows exactly what's in there and so that I do too because I do make like bean and cheese burritos sometimes also and that way they don't get mixed up because they're going to look the same from the outside. And um, I added three quarters of a cup of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. Use any shredded cheese you have on hand. If you have a block of cheese and you're like I need to get rid of this, shred it up. You can add that however much cheese that you prefer and this is just again one pound of sausage drained two or three quarters cup of cheese 10 tortillas and 10 eggs so you don't want to overfill it fill it just about that is good and then you're going to and this is going to be a little difficult to do one-handed you want to roll it over and then pull back tuck in each end Ooh, that is not going to work tuck in each end here I'm pretty impressed with myself, honestly, that I have not made a bigger mess than I have right now. All right, and then roll it up, and I kind of press it down to make sure that everything gets solidified. And there you go. Like I said, it's not perfect because I did that one-handed, um, but that is it. And then you're just going to place these in a single layer as best as you can. It'll be easier when you're not one-handed. <laughs> Hopefully my tripod will be here before I show you more freezer meals. All right, so there's that one. I'm going to do the same process with these other nine, show you what it looks like, and show you all three of our preparations. You'll notice, I will say, 
one of the baked zitis I've decided we're having for dinner. So that's why I only covered one of them and labeled it. All right, guys, so this is everything completed. I wanted to show you that was 10 burritos in a gallon size freezer bag. If you roll them tightly, they will fit. And you wanna squeeze as much air out as you can um, and then lay these flat to freeze. That way you can easily pull one out at a time as you need them. You could also wrap these in uh, wax paper, um, not wax paper, uh, saran wrap or aluminum foil. Just know that obviously you can't put the aluminum foil in the microwave to heat them up. Um, but super simple guys, that's it. Here's our baked ziti. Again, one of them we're gonna go ahead and have for dinner so I didn't wrap it. And then there's the French toast casserole. Um, I started this, this took me right out an hour and 15 minutes even with filming. So, um, and that would be two meals here, a French toast casserole and then lots of burritos. So you can totally do this. And uh, I hope that you found something that you in, that sparked an idea for you or a recipe that you would like to try. Um, or just an entertaining video. So uh, leave me a comment down below letting me know what recipe you're excited to try or what freezer recipes that you love to do on a regular basis or that you've tried and you loved. I would love to know. I'm always excited to add new things to our freezer to make things better. Um, so again, leave me a comment down below letting me know what freezer meal you enjoy. And also, I just want to reiterate here at the end that this is a collaboration video with Moss Family TV. Check them out. Her video, Fallon's video, is going to be in the description box below. And I know that you're going to enjoy that video. They are such a wonderful family. So, um, thank you so much for joining me, guys. I will check you. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.